But first, we want to bring you this story, the latest development in a hazing case out of Pennsylvania that shocked the nation. Prosecutors in Center County announced yesterday the discovery of a key piece of missing evidence in the case against Beta Theta Pi fraternity members at Penn State, leading prosecutors to file involuntary manslaughter charges against five fraternity brothers, among 17 total charged with a range of offenses, including tampering with evidence, all stemming from an alleged hazing incident in February of this year at the fraternity. It is a tragedy investigators say involved a lethal amount of alcohol and intentionally, intentionally deleted video and a 19-year-old who lost his life. We're, we're making holiday plans without our son, Tim, because of your actions. Timothy Piazza was a sophomore at Penn State, a football player from New Jersey who was pledging to become a member of the Beta Theta Pi fraternity. But on February 2nd of this year, something went horribly wrong during a fraternity party. And two days later, Piazza was dead. We have spent the past eight months wondering, how can this happen on the campus of Penn State? The visions of him lying in a hospital bed, <sighs> battered and bruised and on life support, looking as if he got hit by a tractor trailer, make no sense. The district attorney's office says new surveillance video, manually deleted by a fraternity member, but now recovered, makes it clear what happened. DA Stacy Parks Miller says the video from the frat house basement shows frat members pushed dangerous amounts of alcohol on pledges in a drinking marathon called the gauntlet. She says the new video shows 18 drinks were provided to Piazza alone by fraternity brothers in less than 90 minutes, causing his blood alcohol level to reach nearly five times the legal limit. The basement video was allegedly deleted as the investigation into Piazza's death intensified. The Commonwealth was able to ascertain new criminal acts from the evening of Tim Piazza's death. And as a result of the conduct on that video, we are today announcing the filing of new charges from brothers from this fraternity. The FBI painstakingly worked to recover this video over the past several months. It could now result in at least some of the fraternity brothers going to prison. Piazza, an engineering student, fell headfirst down the stairs during the night of his party, ultimately suffering traumatic brain injuries, a collapsed lung, and a ruptured spleen. Prosecutors say critical time was lost because after Piazza's fall, fraternity brothers waited nearly 12 hours to call for help. Now, say Piazza's parents, justice for the loss of their son and for others caught up in the crosshairs of hazing on college campuses may be within reach. Hazing is illegal, and justice needs to be served. It's time to man up, fellas, and be held accountable for your actions. Joining me now is the district attorney for Center County, Pennsylvania, Stacy Parks Miller. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you originally filed this as an involuntary manslaughter case against some defendants. A judge threw that out, saying you overcharged it. You kept pushing. The FBI finds this deleted tape showing what happened in the basement that night, and now we're back to involuntary manslaughter. What is it on that tape that you think justifies the charges that originally the judge said you didn't have? Right. So originally, we, we filed the charges based upon the evidence we did have, which showed the beginning of the night, and we had Mr. Piazza's blood alcohol content. So circumstantially... Point, point four. Yeah, right. almost a point four. There was a range that, that. that was was a lower range to a point three six. Um, so we knew circumstantially what he had, you know, consumed at the house, uh, and so we were confident going ahead with that. But since then, we learned the second half of the tape, which we thought never actually uh, was created, was in fact created at another part of the house and deliberately deleted. So now we have that, so we can show every moment of the night, and we don't have to rely on circumstantial inference. Can you can you tell us what it shows? Yeah, yeah. So we filed the charges, and, and they it's already public record that it shows that, um, you know, he continued to be given alcohol by the brothers. So there can't be this argument that, well, after the beginning hazing incident, he went off on his own in the house and, and drank alcohol on his own. It shows the continuation of um, the hazing experience, that he never once sweat and got alcohol on his own, that the brothers all continued to give him the, the vodka handles and give him beers and give him um, wine bag drinks. And so he had, you know, over 18 drinks in one hour and 22 minutes, putting his alcohol level up to that amount before he fell and suffered the brain injury. 
How important are the text messages going to be in this case? Because it's emerged now, this is from a uh, preliminary hearing that occurred in July 2017, that one uh, fraternity member texted to the other, erasing the cameras could be the look as long as no one found out. And the other one, Braxton Becker, the house manager, responded, I think the exact same thing. Has he been charged? Yes, Braxton Becker has been charged. He is the one that is charged with deleting the video. And um, the reality is, is that we had always wondered, we had the beginning video and we had video of uh, Timothy when he was injured and, and they both were, we thought, compelling. And we thought, wh why would somebody delete the middle part? What, what could it show? And now we know, um, we, you know, it's our argument, that's why they deleted it, is that it, it shows the continuation and it, it shows the, the continued hazing. So, um, yeah, the text messages are extremely important, always, always are um, mm -hmm. forensic evidence, and the individual that we charged is, is in that one conversation talking about deleting the video. The critics will say it's still not involuntary manslaughter, that yeah. this is something, uh, this is, you can charge hazing, you can charge, uh, you know, providing alcohol to a minor, mm -hmm. but to prove involuntary manslaughter, you have to show their actions were a direct cause of injury or death, yeah. and that it was foreseeable that right. serious injury or death would occur. These guys are going to say, you know, we, we gave him drinks. I didn't know how many drinks he had before I gave him the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting idea, however. Um, we also already have an expert opinion from a pathologist, and this was already part of the public record, and that pathologist said that the alcohol alone was fatal before the fall, so we don't even need the fall to show that. And then we argued at the first preliminary hearing, it, you ask a third grader, if you give someone 18 drinks over an hour and 22 minutes, what's, what's foreseeable about that? But and how do you prove that the guy who gave him 18 knew about 1 through 17? Because we had strong evidence, and this is already part of the public record that they had been doing this ritual for many many semesters and so uh, it was a planned activity and they all come and volunteer mm -hmm. for it it's the same activity over and over quick question for you so you are about to leave your post as DA you lost your uh, re-election bid yeah. and the new guy coming in behind you apparently has not made a public comment on whether he intends to pursue these charges Correct. is this case in danger of going away this case could be in danger, I suppose, of a different view of it um, if the person who has, is going to succeed me is not a true blue prosecutor. But I think that the piazzas would stand for no less, and I frankly think the public would stand for no less. This is, this is a, a, a case that requires attention and requires justice, and I think that um, if he doesn't feel it in his heart, he, he'll feel it as a result of the duty that that job imposes mm -hmm. on him. I mean, the hazing that we've seen on college campuses which too often results in serious bodily injury yes. or even death, it has to stop. It has to stop. It has to stop, and it's not just about getting a buzz no. uh, in, your, in your college frat house anymore. No. People's lives are in danger. We've seen it happen too many times. Thank you for being here, Stacey. Thank you for having me. I want to tell our viewers that Penn State says it has shut this fraternity down. It has already disciplined 32 individuals, and it adds student safety is our priority, and we will continue to hold accountable those who are found to have put the well-being of others in jeopardy. We should also note that those previously charged in this case have denied all wrongdoing. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.